What kind of John Paul Gautier shit is this? What are you, a pimp stormtrooper? A modern podcast where Chris and Mike talk about TV, movies, superheroes, and everything in between. It's time for Superhero Slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this is a spoiler cast for Marvel's Luke Cage, specifically on Netflix. <laughs> specifically. <laughs> In case so. you were looking for it anywhere else. Yes, so mm-hmm. Luke, Luke Cage has finally dropped. It is the uh, fall uh, Marvel Netflix show that we're getting this year. And uh, boy, uh, we were excited to watch it. And it took us roughly about a week to get through it, for sure. Because, uh, uh, as some people say, uh, life may find a way, but life also gets in the way. So I finally yeah. finished watching this in the wee hours of last night. I don't know about you. When did you finish this? Uh, I finished Thursday, but I didn't get to start until Monday either. So I, I got most of it done in four days, mm-hmm. um, which is actually really, really surprising considering how much you have to do in, in that, <laughs> that little bit of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so overall, uh, I got to watch it. And you, you had three episodes in last week, right, before we started talking on our yeah. regular show? Yeah, we gave a little – we gave some initial impressions last week. If you listen to our normal news episodes this week, we kind of gave you our um, our overall review of the series. So uh, do you want to do you want to let us know real quick what you thought about the show, and then we'll just uh, jump right into the uh, – we'll jump right into the story. Spoilers, we won't hold anything back. Yeah, so uh, overall, I think Luke Cage is a good TV show, a great Netflix edition. However, it is not the strongest of their series. Uh Um, Again, I will attribute this to maybe a lack of action, but halfway through the show, this becomes a whole different show. Uh Uh, It's essentially what I would say two seasons in one. Um, And while I think that normally that would help the prevention of the casual Netflix slowdown around episodes 8, 9, or 10, Uh it actually just made it that much more unbearable throughout the end there at, at times. But overall, I still had a good time. I just don't think it's the strongest outing for Marvel on Netflix at at the current time with, with four se- series out there to, to watch. Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting to think about the series because I felt like this, ep- this series had more important things to say. You know, uh, like I said before on our news episode, uh, this leans into the, uh, the discrimination and the Black Lives Matter movement uh, more than I would say avoiding it for sure. And I felt like they dealt with some really important themes more than anything else has. I mean, Daredevil really hasn't gone much into that. Uh, uh, Jessica Jones may have gone into it a little bit uh but yeah i really liked how they leaned into it and how they made uh Har- harlem a real place they made the mm-hmm. community real they made luke cage connecting uh and not hiding his superpowers that was kind of interesting to see a character not having to hide and could be out there in the open and it, and it really worked and made sense in this case where you know uh the this uh fictitious world this uh movie universe that they're used to the idea of superheroes now i I, I think they dropped the term silver hammer at least two or three times in this series. So people are used to the idea of super ho- super powered people. So when you see one walking down the street blocking bullets, people aren't losing their shit. You know, they're not going crazy. Uh, I like the, the the side character that they had that was um, selling that was selling a 4K footage. You know, and he was offering Luke C- Luke Cage 4K for 4K. I thought that was a uh, thought that was kind of clever. So uh, the, the idea of superheroes being in this world is just very ingrained. This is kind of one of the bonuses that you get from an ex- from a cinematic universe that you've built over the years. A lot of the groundwork is already done for you. You don't have to go into all this minutia of explaining to the people people of Harlem why why a superhero exists you know they kind of know what's going on you know as they quote the incident they, yeah they've seen aliens fall from the sky <laughs> um a, a bulletproof you know black man in Harlem that's they want to hire him they, yeah. they're not afraid of him they actually want to pay him to do 
like protect them and, and, and help them out yeah. throughout most of the series. Yeah, exactly. So I, I really like the world that they built around. You know, we've been in hell kit. We've been in hell's kitchen most of the time. Uh, I'm not exactly 100% sure where we were for Jessica Jones. I don't know if that was hell's kitchen or just another part of New York that just doesn't have a, a descriptive neighborhood name to it. But I liked being in this, uh, this, uh, this place. Uh, it felt very, uh, creative. Uh, so I loved that, uh, mm-hmm. but like you said, yeah, the, I, the world the world was huge. It, it was a big part of it, and, and we'll talk more about why that that's how they built that later. Yeah, but I def I, I I think I can definitely agree with you where this does feel like there's a, a a lack of action. But I think I think it's almost by design, but uh, maybe unfortunate that it kind of was that way because. My favorite thing Luke Cage does is when he's beating up fools. I love it. It's hel- it's not only is it hilarious, but it can be really action packed. Um, you know, like all most of these uh, Netflix series, right around episode three is kind of when you get your big impressive action set piece, and we got that again here with Luke Cage when he's uh when he's a uh, uh, storming Christmas attics, and that was really awesome. Mm-hmm. And I love getting that, but I wish we would have got more. But throughout the show, I just kind of had to tell myself that this is this is just a different type of show. You know, when you when you have this character that literally can't be hurt, bullets bounce off of them. You know, you you kind of have to find a different way to tell the story because it can't just be action all the time. Because then you just be telling yourself these villains are just stupid. Why do they keep throwing themselves at him when they know he can't be hurt? So you do after you get like about halfway through the series, people start to be like, well, we can't do anything. Literally. Cotton Mouth is just like I, I. The moment he walks into the room, the whole everything is shut down. There's nothing I can do. So uh, there, I guess there's just kind of that balance that maybe the showrunner could have possibly found a little bit better. But um, overall, it, it, I, I don't think anybody is going to say this was a failure. I, I think it's a it's a it, it would be a mm-hmm. I think it's a bit of a stretch to find anything that's flawed in the show. Uh, I, I I think it's good. It didn't knock it out of the park for me, but it is definitely a good time. Like I I spent my entire Saturday watching this show, and I didn't regret a minute of it. But um, yeah, I, I we can definitely talk more about it. Yeah. So my 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 problem is the first half is great. Cottonmouth and and Mariah Dillard, ironically, no relation. Um, definitely two great villains. I thought they worked really well together. And when they kill Cottonmouth halfway through the series, I got really worried. And Diamondback did not fill that hole. Well, Diamondback didn't fill that hole nearly as well as Cottonmouth did. Um, Diamondback, like, he's been pulling all these strings for, like, all these years to make Luke Cage, you know, what he is. I I don't know. He didn't fill the role. When he stepped into that nightclub and kind of took on Cottonmouth's role, it didn't feel like Diamondback. Yeah. it, it, It didn't feel right. And I think trying to replace that whole Cottonmouth left really, really made the the series. It didn't, like I said, it it wasn't awful, but it didn't do it any favors. Yeah, and I I think that kind of goes into a thing that um, I wanted to bring up was reveals. Uh, They they were talking about Diamondback throughout this entire series at the beginning, and you really started to get the idea. It's like, oh, this is a this is a big player. This is a big guy. You know, he 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 is the only person that Cottonmouth is kind of restrained around. You know, uh, Shades, who I think is kind mm. of one of the cool one of the a, a cool new addition to the Marvel universe in a way. I think he was a fun villain. Uh, you know, there were some times uh, at the end of the series, uh, at the end of the season, where he easily could have been killed, and I was rooting for him not to die because he's so. Every time he's on screen, it's really exciting. I love his performance, so I didn't want Shades to die. Um, but you know, Shades. I, was, I, was, I thought I thought Shades had a superpower because how did he get out of Seagate? You know, and, uh-huh. but apparently he didn't. But no, Shades was the the best non main villain throughout the whole series. I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, for sure. But you know, he was working for Diamondback, so I was expecting to get a to get a big reveal. You know, almost to the moment where the camera pans up from like you know his big old like you know boot. I was just expecting a different character, a bigger reveal. And technically, the first time we see Diamondback is just when he has a sniper rifle and he's looking out the window of kind of like a like a Hummer on the streets of Harlem. So you know, for, so when you first see this guy, you're like, oh wait, who is this guy? And then it kind of comes comes out that he's Diamondback and you're just like oh I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more bombastic something a little bit more like bam kick the door and here's Diamondback whoa that's crazy so we didn't really get and Diamondback just happens to be Luke Cage's brother yeah 
so, that that second half of that show just really it was more of a letdown compared to the first half. Even the final battle in the barbershop with Diamondback in his little pimp stormtrooper outfit. Yeah, which is like, another, another thing I was going to bring up when it comes to the reveal. You know, he's looking in this mysterious case and he's telling everybody this is the one of the seven devil, deadly sins. This is wrath. And then we see the carnage that he did in that warehouse where people were just like messed up. And I was like, whoa. This is awesome. He's definitely got some sort of suit on. You know, this is going to be really amazing. And I was thinking, since they were, since they did, they very, very intelligently brought Hammer back into this, back into the universe through the, these Hammer weapons. And I was like, oh, he's going to have legit Hammer tech. Hey, the last time we saw a Hammer tech suit, it fucking looked like Iron Man. So I thought we were going to get some like cinema quality CG suit on on um diamondback and he was going to be in kind of like a modified iron man suit running through harlem and I, we were going to see luke cage trying to dismantle the suit and i was like this is going to be insane and then all of a sudden a dude walks in the pop's barbershop in a green jumpsuit and you know uh they rightly compared it you know to a pimp stormtrooper uh sean paul gautier shit so i mean I knew once I saw the suit, like, oh, this must be a homage to whatever Diamondback looks like in the comic yeah. book, because this totally looks like something that was drawn up back in the 70s. Uh, so that's another reveal that I was disappointed in. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, um, uh, you know, but, you know, if we're going to talk about, you know, the characters in the story, you know, there were definitely positive characters in the story that I, I think outweighed any sort of um, uh, negative characters. Yeah, no, I yeah exactly. I really enjoy the addition of Misty Knight. You, she, so actually, I'm gonna go back to Luke Cage. Mike Coulter, you said I believe it was you who said you actually feel the pain Mike Coulter feels or his character portrays on the screen. Yeah, he he he's my uh, he's my new man crush. He he is he is uh, a presence when we get him on screen. So whenever we get him and Shades on screen, it's 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 doubly awesome. So uh, awesome performances there. Yeah. It, and he definitely portrayed all the pain and stuff he, he had to go through, especially whenever his, he was in boiling acid, um, mm-hmm. getting shrapnel removed. Like, his, yeah. his screams and pain, like, you feel it. I was yeah. really impressed with that. The, a great actor to get for Luke Cage. Um, mm-hmm. re- really nailed it home. Misty Knight, I think she was good. Uh, a, a little maybe overbearing at times um, in some stuff, but I think her character was done really well a good foil to Luke Cage if you will. Yeah, I thought uh, her character progressed well through the series. Like w- once she you got to the back half of the show and she started kind of she started losing it, you know, her part her partner died and she was kind of getting pulled from all these different angles, you know, and she started assaulting people in interrogation rooms. Like I really felt like, you know, uh like it was uh she was driven there. So I thought she portrayed that really well. Yes, and then also um, Claire Temple, uh, the night nurse, um, took over a very big role in this, actually, compared to her other mm-hmm. shows. Um, and, and she slept with two out of three of, uh, defenders so far, uh, so just, just pointing well, that out. I don't think she's slept with Luke Cage yet. Oh, that you know they had coffee. It's just, it's just <laughs> he doesn't like coffee, man. But uh, uh, but while we're on Claire Temple, uh, night nurse here, real quick, um, I think they are using up co- coincidences on her uh, too much. You know, I, I get that she's supposed to be kind of the Agent Coulson of the of the Defenders universe, but it's getting way too coincidental. You know, uh, it was a coincidence that she. Um, that she ran into uh, a daredevil in the in the very first season of daredevil and that made sense you know they they say in storytelling you get one coincidence and i got that but then also when jessica jones brought luke cage into the hospital and she just happened to be working there and and then you know he just happens to come into the into the same coffee shop that that uh, she's in the restaurant. Stuff. It's just it's just getting it's just getting like too like how can we just shoehorn her into these characters? And then in the last episode, you see her taking a martial arts flyer. I really hope that's not how she meets Danny Rand. I hope she's not taking a self defense class and happens to stumble across another superhero again. I think she's great. I love her character, and I I kind of like actually how she grew in this. This is the first time we got to see her her character grow because we know she's not getting her own series. There's not going to be a night nurse season one. So I like how she gets to grow in these different in these different series. But um, 
It, I'm going to disagree it, with you. I, th- I think she has a destiny to be with him. I think I think that's that is her destiny in the series rather than coincidences. You may well, call them coincidences, but even her mom said that this, she has a destiny yeah, to follow. I, I think they could I think they can find a more clever way to bring all of this together. Um I I like I like that she is the she is going to be kind of the key that brings them all together. But I think there just needs to be a smarter way to bring her into the fold with them. You know, I would actually like it better if she was hunting them if she was uh, hunting these characters down like she because we've established in this in this uh, season one of Luke Cage that she wants to help these super powered people she feels like that's her purpose so instead of stumbling across Danny Rand and a martial arts class um, in Iron Fist season one I would like her to maybe see uh, Danny Rand like on TV or a, a, in a newspaper or something like that and seek him out because then it's not coincidental she's looking for Danny Rand that makes more sense so but, but but why would she be looking for him? Because like, she because she wants to help superpowered people. She said that. But, but in they the don't. Season. But who knows? Who knows that he's superpowered? Well, I think it's going to be pretty obvious. You know, when she sees like his fist glowing or something like that. You know, I, all all I'm saying is just like it's she's 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 been very very lucky to come across all of these superpowered people. So I just want it to feel less like luck. But I mean that that's just that's kind of nitpicking at this point. But you know she's going to be a bigger character, so you know they they, they need to, to treat that stuff a little bit more seriously. But overall, I love that she was a, right. she was a major player in this in this season. You know she was uh, just kind of here and there. You know in some of these other episodes, she was only in like one episode of Jessica Jones. So she got she got her full she got her full prime time slot. You know. Yeah, yeah. So she was good. Um, Cottonmouth again, great villain. I liked. I liked his nightclub. Um, he was scary at times, but he also, you know, respected the the laws of Harlem. I guess mm-hmm. the law of the streets. Um, and I, 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 I don't buy Mariah Dillard's uh, transformation all the way through just yet. But maybe I need to sleep on that a little more because she kept. I don't know. She was too political, and then she was also too street. At the same, I don't know. Something about her just didn't jive with me. I don't. I don't know how you feel. Well, it's it's actually funny. Like I um I like kind of how we're having these differing op- opinions on the series because it seemed like we both liked it, but we we both kind of experienced it a different way. So I think that's awesome. But yeah, I I I, I think I did buy into it. You know, I did like that. Um, you know, at, at the base of almost every politician, there's like a thin line between like crook and hero. So I, I, I liked how uh, she kind of could pretty easily be turned into a bad guy. I, I really liked the flashbacks when, when you got to see, um, mm-hmm. what was it, Mama Mabel? Is that what they called her? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I like those flashbacks because it kind of really gives you empathy for what these um, what these villains went through. I mean, uh, props, to Cornell. Netflix, props to Netflix for giving us these... Um, awesome backstories of you know will yeah. fisk and these other bad guys yeah i mean the thing with, with cornell stokes is you know he wanted to just play music is all mm-hmm. he wanted to do and and he got dragged into it and yeah uh, they they all they all had a tight backstory like everyone there was pretty much related and then when cottonmouth died like and pops died i'm like um what all that connection's kind of gone because I don't think Mariah had that that connection that everybody else did yeah. to the streets. Yeah, we got this very uh, in depth backstory, you know, of this family, and I thought it played really, really well. But then when we talk about Diamondback coming up, you know, we did get the connection of how he was related to Luke Cage, and it was, and for me, it was believable. You know, it made sense. You know, we kind of kind of had this uh, shady preacher sleeping around, having two kids. You know, I get where his anger could come from, but it just doesn't seem super organic to bring him mm-hmm. to Harlem. You know, uh, you know, and he it, just so happens to have all these weapons that are built to take on Luke Cage's powers. That yeah, he, he hasn't had it, for it's, very long. It, it seems it would have seemed more plausible if Diamondback showed up in season two of Luke Cage. You know, yeah. uh, these uh, these Netflix shows are all really rooted in New York. You know, so I was expecting like a, a New York villain. You know, it, it just seems weird for a guy, you know, that's a criminal that, that came out of the south out of Georgia. That just kind of that would be his base of operations. So it would have made more sense if maybe, oh, season one happened. You know, you put Luke Cage's face all over the news for season one. Bam, now his brother knows where he is. He's going to show up in season two. So it did kind of seem uh, inorganic to have Diamondback show up. He, his Him showing up and the, the, his relation to Luke Cage was a bigger coincidence than I feel the 
the Claire Temple coincidence is that, that you talked about. Yeah, I, like, c- I could see that. It's just like Luke Cage, we get he's it. He's been that- so he, he's been supplying guns to Cottonmouth forever, and then all of a sudden he just happens to be Luke Cage's brother. Yeah, it's just like a bullet to take him down. Yeah, it's very believable that Luke Cage's brother could be a villain. It's just not so believable that he just happens to show up in season one alongside of these other villains, so I think well, he could have been more effective in, in a season two. It, 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 well, and it, that that brings me to something else. The ending of this series was different than any other ending. It had a very open ending. Mm-hmm. Luke Cage is going back to jail. Um, or Seagate, rather. But, I mean, um, Bobby Fish has all the paperwork to get him out. Uh, so he won't be there too long. And then um, Diamondback was being experimented on by the guy who gave Luke Cage's powers. Mm-hmm. And in the comic books, Luke Cage's brother is actually a character called uh, Coldfire. Um, so I don't know what powers they're going to give him, if they're going to turn him into Coldfire, but they didn't kill the villain in this one mm-hmm. for once. I, and, I, mean, I mean, I mean, we might be we might be dogging on the circumstances of Diamondback, but I actually thought he was a good character. I kind of like I like how he was motivated by being kind of like the um, that the half the half son that you know the dad didn't want. You know, he had the he had like this, this scripture going through his head and motivating him to do these bad things. Like I like the moment where that uh polit- that. that political guy I, don't, I think he was like a city council person opened up that bible yeah. and it was just marked like every single letter had a note on it like just looking at that bible was enough to go like oh this guy is this guy is pretty crazy he's he's off his rocker really delving no. into this stuff no diamondback would have been great i just don't i think when they tried to replace cottonmouth with diamondback that's where the issue was mm-hmm. like he he didn't need to be in the club. He didn't need the music. He was he's all about guns and technology. Mm-hmm. Not not musical guests, which there was a, a musical guest in every episode, which was really really cool to see. And there's like a mini music video for every one of them. Yeah. Like they made like a mini music video while they were playing on the stage and I thought that was really cool. I wouldn't go to that club. I want to go to Harlem's Paradise Club and just yeah. uh, prefer- one day. preferably when there's not a superhuman shootout going on for sure. Um, yeah. One one thing I uh, I enjoyed about this show, especially watching another Netflix original series uh, not long ago, was uh, Making a Murderer, where that whole docu series is all about the the procedure of law and testimony and evidence and stuff like that. So watching this show, I kind of like how they treated that stuff with some respect. Like, oh, just because Misty Knight got that person on her iPhone a recording of a statement, it doesn't mean it's immiscible. You know, she needs to go to court. She needs to testify. So I kind of like how that. Um, the police side of things was kind of nerfed, you know, and, and it was making Misty mad. It was making Luke mad, you know, that the that the system couldn't help him. So uh, I thought everything on the on the blue side, on the badge side, worked pretty well. Uh, so I, I was happy to see that. Yeah, yeah, no, that was good. Um, again, just as many crooked cops in this one as there was in I think it was was it Daredevil. Yeah, that seems to be a, that seems to be a problem in New York. It's full of crooked cops connected to the mob. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, wh- whatever you want to do. Um, and I don't know. I had a good time with it. I, I, I don't think it didn't, the show, it didn't feel like a pain to watch them. I didn't at any time was like, oh, I got to watch the next one. Like, they're going to drag it out. And no time did I feel that, which was good. And uh, my wife my wife had a good time with it. But I think she's a bigger fan of Jessica Jones still. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple things, uh, uh, Easter eggs I wanted to point out. We saw the Stanley Easter egg. Um, he was on a poster saying, if you see something, say something. Oh, I don't think I saw that. Where was that in the show? When he, it was in the later episodes when he went into the, uh, the gas station and I think he, did he run into Method Man or yeah, Red Man? Yeah, from- that, that's a, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Method Man. Uh, but that was, I think that was my favorite, uh, Easter egg or cameo in the show <laughs> where he walks in and yeah. Method, Method Man's like, Hey, you're the guy. And he's just like, no man, you're the guy. I love you're the that. Guy. And then in a moment where I felt like it could have been the cheesiest thing ever to happen in a TV show where Method Man goes on the radio and raps about Luke Cage, but it totally it totally worked because the whole point of that was to like let the people of Harlem know that Luke Cage is a good guy and to get his back. And I, I was in love. I was grinning from ear to ear during that whole montage of uh, them selling the the hoodies with bolt holes in them and stuff like that, and that was just uh-huh. that was so cool. I I love that. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, Stanley was uh, his poster uh, was on the outside of that one in his. Uh, okay, outside. gotcha. 
so he didn't make it up. Uh, the 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 flyer she did take was for Colleen Wings, a uh, self defense class, who actually Danny Rand runs into her, um, and she has the sword. Remember we looked at those images with that girl with the sword from Iron Fist a couple weeks ago. Uh huh. That's that's Colleen Wing. So Claire Temple is taking classes from her, who knows Danny Rand somehow. We we don't know how that works out yet. So that was that. Uh, the musical guest. We saw some classic costumes. We talked about Diamondback. Luke Cage's classic costume was there. When he got out of his Weapon X Wolverine tank, which yeah. felt a lot like that. Yeah, and also that episode in general was really, really cool. I believe that was episode four. I really enjoyed that flashback to him at Seagate. I didn't even know if we would see any of that, and I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, to kind of see this, guy, see him in jail where he's not, um, he's not invincible, and kind of see him at his lowest, dealing with this like prison system, meeting um, Reva. Um, did uh, one thing I was trying to remember? Did Reva ever become his wife? Did they get married? I think I think they did. I think they said his wife was killed in Jessica Jones. Yeah, that that's what I thought too. But I, I really love seeing the the origins of that, and that was that was a really good episode. It was cool seeing him get those powers, uh, bust out of jail, <laughs> put the blouse on with the tr, and he's like, I look like a fool taking that. I I thought that was a really clever way to put a put a character in a canon ridiculous costume just for a moment so the fans could enjoy that. So that was pretty clever. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, it, it was, and I forgot about Reva mostly because again, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones is still, you know, trying to find out, you know, where um, Kilgrave was because he controlled, you know, his wife, and um, finding out that she really wasn't as clean cut as as you thought she was in this one was very interesting. Mm-hmm. They like helping Luke Cage get over her, but also learning that you know she was in on all these prison fights and experiments going on at Seagate, and. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I seeing him in that yellow shirt with the tiara and, and the the gauntlets was pretty <laughs> entertaining for for a little bit. Um, the last shot we see of Misty Knight is in something one of her outfits more closely to her comic book appearance, the burgundy mm-hmm. with with her with her hair done up uh, like such. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else who who had costumes that I well, can think of that, that um, tried to do it. I mean, I uh, speaking of Misty Knight, um, I believe in the comic books, doesn't she get an Iron Man robot arm? She does have a bionic arm yes, um, and from, I, given to her by Tony Stark yeah, in, in there. And they kind of hinted at that a little bit when she was shot in the arm uh, and underneath uh, the yeah. club. Uh, she was just like, oh, we got to take care of this or you might lose your arm. So I was just like, oh, I don't think they're going to actually give her an Iron Man mechanical arm, but they could kind of be like, oh, see, we understand that the character at one point did lose her arm. So I would say that was a little bit of an Easter egg. Yeah, I, I, I agree, because I kept saying, oh, she's going to lose her arm, and she's going to uh-huh. have a bionic arm at the end of the show given to her from Stark Industries, is what I kept thinking, like, mm-hmm. a Stark Industries bionic, but they, but they didn't, and that's okay, that doesn't that doesn't take away from it. And one of the characters we saw repeatedly, not just Night Nurse, have we seen, we've seen the character Turk take mm-hmm. place in several... I think all Netflix series so far. I think yeah. it's been in all four of them. Yeah, and I think this makes more. I think this makes a lot more sense with Turk than it does with Night Nurse. Is because Turk's a criminal that has his dirty little paws and a lot of different things. So it makes sense that you would kind of see him all over the place. Like he's he's selling guns to people. He wants to sell Air Jordans to people. So it makes sense that he would just be getting his hands in the stuff that he shouldn't be, and he would be making his way around the city. So it makes more sense seeing Turk pop up, and it was, and he's kind of like a fun villain that you like to see kind of abused by the, by the good guys. You know, he gets stuffed in a dumpster. He's like, don't worry, you got food in there. He's like, Oh man, there's diapers. You know, I yeah. love the, those moments are funny. It's just like, you know, he's not, he's like an annoyance. He's not really bad enough to like kill, you know, he's not, he's not going to like kill your mama or kill your daddy. You know, he's just, he's just going to try to make a quick buck. So I, I kind of like seeing him pop up in the show. Yeah. A Tur- Turk is definitely a, an entertaining character um, more so than I think the other, the entourage that uh, the, I think it was the same Ziggs or Zags. Yeah, something like that. He he is yeah, either had, zigging or zagging. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's that's some Easter eggs I saw stuff like that. Um, overall, again, I, I'm impressed with the world building they did with Harlem. I felt like I was actually there, and then the music overplay and everything from the 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 concerts in the club and the music that played during everything else felt really really natural. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely more prevalent than the other show's music. Yeah, choices. Like, uh, I-, I love seeing these other characters pop up from the other series, but like, 
I, 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 I understand that they're building up to the defenders and leaving out the other characters is just going to make the team up seem so sweet. But uh, my wife will contest <laughs> that at those last couple episodes, I was begging for Matt Murdock to show up just once. Like Claire kept saying, I have a lawyer friend. I was just like, just take the fucking lawyer friend's advice. I want to see Matt Murdock pop up. Like I just want them to meet like just formally, just like say, yeah, my name is like Matt Murdock. I'm going to be your lawyer or something. Like I, I knew Daredevil wasn't going to pop down in a suit and help him or not, or, or nothing. And I had a feeling Jessica Jones definitely wasn't going to pop up because that would be a whole weird uh, love triangle thing. See, that, that was a big that would have been the better one because she already knows Luke Cage rather than trying to introduce Matt Murdock to Luke Cage. I think her, like, she's like, I can call someone who can help me. And then, like, they could have, like, totally beat him up. Yeah, and maybe. Then... Yeah, maybe. I was just like, man, I was just hoping for something. I understand that they're waiting for the Defenders. They're going to they're gonna basically wait to give us all the goods at once. But I was just begging for, like, just a little bit. Like, just give me a primo Netflix actor that we've seen you know give me matt murdoch give me like foggy like give me somebody i just want to see i just want to see th these uh universes cross over just a, a little just just a little bit more but i i understand that's just kind of more fan service for me more than anything but you know um and it's a different part of new york yeah but i feel like maybe we might get that in iron fist just because i think iron fist is going to be that last series before we get the defenders so i feel like it might make more sense to have these characters pop up once or twice um, in maybe like the last couple episodes of Iron Fist. You know, it might set up the connection a little bit easier, you know, depending on how many episodes they're going to do for the Defenders. But all I can say is um, I think if I had to, I think if I had to rank, you know, so we have four seasons of Netflix right now, and I think we should kind of rank them maybe kind of like out of four since it's, it's, it's an easy, it's an easy thing to do right now. We don't have mm -hmm. tons of seasons, so we don't have to get out a piece of paper. So I, I think Daredevil season one is still easily number one for me. Um, I, and then I think, I think it almost goes in, I think it almost goes in chronological order, you know, Daredevil season one, awesome. Then it goes Jessica Jones, uh, season one, then Daredevil season two, and then, Luke Cage is last, but last is still really, really good. So I think chronological order is what I stick with. I think Daredevil season two is better than season one, um, mostly because they worked out a lot of the kinks from season one. There's a lot less downtime, so having more characters paid off. So I think Daredevil season two, Daredevil season one, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage is the way I'm going to go. All right, uh, I think that makes Luke, sense. Luke Cage is like, Luke Cage again is not the best series they have but their worst is better than most people's best yeah so. and i and i think it i think we're we're more talking about the series as a whole i i, I think we we love the character of luke cage so i think that's mm. i think that's the most important part is we love mike coulter we love luke cage uh we love everything that he is we love the world that he lives in uh we just think maybe some of the characters around him maybe could have showed up a little bit more organically maybe showed up in another season um and i think all we wanted we just wanted more of the good stuff you know we wanted more of those action scenes i loved that crispix addicts raid that was so awesome because you have this basically this big impenetrable wall that has legs and arms so i would have loved to see him maybe do that maybe one more time i think that would have been cool because the fight at the end was a little uh, a little a little bit of a downer i mean it was just kind of like a street brawl and they, they just basically threw each other into cars it would have been kind of cooler if it was maybe they threw himself into a semi you know a bus make it a at least a little bit bigger a little add a little there's bit some, more fan some walls man like, yeah put a little bit more fan Put a little bit more fanfare around it, you know. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we're going to get all the action we could possibly want in the Defenders, and it definitely looks like we're going to be getting more in Iron Fist. So, uh, yeah, Netflix, keep it keep it going. You did great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do, keep, keep it up. I'm more excited for Iron Fist debuting March 17th, 2017, five months away. So, well, we're almost there. We're, we're, we're definitely getting there. Uh-huh. Um, in the meantime, if people want to know what else you're doing, Mike, maybe you'll do some Luke Cage artwork or, or something like that. Where can they, they find you at? Well, you can follow me at Mike Royer Design on Twitter and Instagram, and you can read my web comics at picklecomics.com. Chris, people want to know how your, how your, your uh, collectible shelf is doing. If they want to get some pictures of that, where can they find that? Uh, you can find that on uh, Twitter at Valdan, V-A-L-D-A-N. I don't know if they have a Luke Cage pop. That's that's a good question. You're gonna they, have to get did. one. You're gonna need they, you're you're gonna need the defender set. 
Maybe I I didn't I don't have they have Daredevil. I've not seen Jessica Jones, um, and it's been about a year since Jessica Jones. So who knows uh, what what's keeping those up? But yeah, definitely keep that out. Uh, you can also find me on Comic UI and uh, my other podcast, Filmside Chats. So all the other places. If people are listening to our spoiler cast. Maybe they don't know we have a regular show that we do every week. Mike, where can they find that regular Superhero Slate podcast at? Yeah, well, if you want to catch up on the news every single week, the best place to go is SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we put the show so you can subscribe. We're on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Tumblr. You can subscribe and get us right in your email inbox, and you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you're a fan of the show, if you like the news, if you like these spoiler casts, leave us a review. It helps us pop up in some um, in some new people's faces and get some new fans. And if, if you're a super fan of the show, just share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we'll be here every week, and we'll be here at every major release talking about and spoiling these uh, these awesome shows that we get so it's a it's a wealth of plenty yes lots of going on and i think we have well over 100 episodes of you to listen to so if you're ever stuck in traffic you know you want to listen to us go back and listen to some old episodes see how wrong we were <laughs> that's, that's the favorite thing to do, so. yeah man all right well i guess uh, we'll catch you guys next week on our regular news the uh, show superhero slate and uh we'll catch you then all right bye everybody Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Let me put on my fedora, put on my glasses, stretch out my, uh, play with my little goatee.